All right, let's go over the test that we just took. Cosecant is this. So the cosecant ratio is this. So that means the sine ratio would be the reciprocal of this, the square root of 3 over 2 and negative. And when is the sine negative? And this is capital, so this would be capital. So we've got to take the sine, which comes out of these two quadrants, and negative, so it has to be down here. And the sine, the y direction, is the large. So, and I can't go around this way because that would be beyond where you take the sine. It's somewhere between negative pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So I have to use negative pi over 3. Okay. Sine, what, what is the angle that has a sine of minus 2? Well, the sine is always somewhere between 1 and minus 1, never up to minus 2, so this one's not possible. And then number 3. When is the tangent negative square root of 3? So that'd be negative square root of 3 over 1. And the square root of 3 and 1, we remember, comes from, that would be negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Or the negative could be down here. So now we've got to take the tangent in a quadrant where it's negative, and the tangent, we also do that one out of 1 and 4. And so down here, the sine is negative, and so we put the negative on the square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine has to be positive. So that ends up being the same place, negative pi over 3, as it was in part A. Okay. Number two, we'll go to number two here, and it says, okay, determine the exact value if possible. So this must be radians, uh, or the, no, this is the ratio. So this is the uh, tangent is negative 7 pi over 9, so that's way down here. So it's an angle like this. Well, that's in the second or third or first or fourth quadrant, and so we use the same angle and take the tangent, and it'll still be negative 7.9. This says, think of this angle, and now it says take the tangent of that angle. Well, that angle will have the same tangent. In fact, if you ever have tangent of tangent inverse or cosine of cosine inverse or sine of sine inverse, if it's the inverse is inside the its inverse function, then it always just comes out to be the same number. Now here we got it the reversed, if it's cosine inverse of the cosine, so we've got to be careful on those. So the cosine of 11 negative, negative so i got to go backwards, and i got to count sevenths, so it's 7 sevenths to here, and then i got to do this into sevenths, and so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So i got to go negative 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm right here-ish. And that's, uh, the cosine then would be this amount. And now I got to do the cosine inverse. So I got to pick it out of these two quadrants from 0 to 2 pi, or 0 to pi. And to do that, I'd have to be here, and it can't be a negative angle. So I got to go this way to get the, where the cosine's the same amount. Well, that was 1, 2, 3 sevenths short of being all the way around. So I have to go back 3 pi over 7. The next one, the sine of the cosine inverse. Well, now these 
the in, co, inverse is inside, but the sine is on, it's not sine, a cos and cos. And if it was cos and cos, it'd be negative one half. But we got to figure out what this is going to be. So we got an angle. And it's the cosine comes out of these two quadrants, and the cosine's negative one half. So that would be there. Negative one half. Now, what's the sine of this angle, which we know is uh, two pi over three? But what's the sine? Well, that's a positive square root of three over two. And D. The cotangent is three halves. So the cotangent's on this line, and it's not one, but one and a half out here, which is a little bit tough. And so some of you decided to draw the triangle and say the cotangent, which is cosine over sine. If you did that, then the hypotenuse, this is talking about an angle, so I'll just call that the angle, the cotangent is 3 over 2. So to find the hypotenuse, that would be 3 squared 9 plus 2 squared 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. This would be the square root of 13. And the sine would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 2 over the square root of 13. Cotangent, and this is over here, so it's it's could be in the first quadrant, and so the sine of it would still be a positive value, 2 over the square root of 13. Okay, number 3. So now we have the sine of an angle is u. So if I draw a triangle where the sine is u, that's opposite, over hypotenuse, so this would fit right in the unit circle, and it's if I need to know what this side is, let's say I called it x, then it would be x squared plus u squared equals 1. Solving for that side, I would subtract u squared, so I'd get x squared equals 1 minus u squared, and then taking the square root, this side would be the square root of 1 minus u squared, and some of you said plus or minus, and it could be plus or minus depending on what quadrant we're in, but we usually don't worry too much about that. Anyway, we get the sine inverse would have been out of the uh, these two quadrants. It didn't say capital, so it could have been anywhere in here. So this technically should be plus or minus, but that side, and so... Um, the tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent, so that would be u over square root of 1 minus u squared. And it could be plus or minus. Okay, that's page 1. Page 2. Determine the exact value of negative 15 degrees. And I saw lots of different ways of doing this. Some people did the sine of uh, 45 minus 60 and did the formula for that, which is sine of the first, cosine of the second, and if it's minus, it's minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Some people did uh, 30 minus 45. And some people did sine of negative 30 divided by 2 and put it into the half angle formula, which would have been square plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the sine, cosine of negative 30 over 2. But the cosine doesn't care whether the angle is positive or negative, and so this would have been um, plus or minus. We've got to decide that, and this would have been the square root of 1 minus um, the cosine of 30 is a square root of 3 over 2 over 2. 
And you could have done some simplifying of that. It could have been plus or minus. Okay, but minus sine of minus 15. Minus 15 is then this quadrant, so it has to be the negative answer. So let's get that cleared up right now. Negative, the square root of, and I could have put the 2 under there, and I bet 1 half minus square root of 3 over 2 times 2 is 4. And I could have made a common denominator. could have done some things there. If I did it this other way, the sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. And sine of 60 is uh, square root of 3 over 2. And I get square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 2 times 2 is 4 is the common denominator. And notice that this comes out to be negative. This is bigger than that, so it comes out to be negative. If you use this one, you get a negative, you get the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 over here and there, but you also get a plus here and a minus there. It comes out the same answer if you do that one. This, it's a little hard to show that this is the same as that. You can do, get, check the decimal approximations to find out they're the same. Okay, on this one, Cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine is the cosine of an angle minus an angle. So this would have been the cosine of the first minus the second. Which comes out to be the cosine of 67 minus 22 is 45. And since it's that, I expected... Many of you got four points for there, but some of you got bonus points for um, taking it one step further. The cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, I saw so many different ways to do this one. I hesitate to even do it because there are so many different ways. Some people said the cosecant squared is... Um, Cosecant squared is 1 plus cotangent squared x minus cotangent squared x plus tangent squared x. And then the cotangents canceled, and you got 1 plus tangent squared x, which is the secant squared x. Some people recognize cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is 1. So then we'd have 1 plus tangent squared x, which is secant squared x. Those were the simpler ones. Some people went to common denominator. Cosecant is 1 over sine squared x minus cosine squared x over sine squared x, and then we have plus tangent squared x. These have common denominators, so you get 1 minus cosine squared x over sine squared x, and then 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, And then that's 1. And if you didn't recognize that as secant, some people said this was sine squared x over cosine squared x. And so they said 1 was cosine squared x over cosine squared x. Common denominator, so they got cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. So that's 1 over cosine squared x, which is secant squared x. Uh, there's variations in this that you could have done. If you recognize some of these earlier ones, it made it a whole lot easier to do. On this one, boy, I, I did a silly mistake when I was doing this the first time. 
I factored out the cosine theta and said it was cosine theta minus sine theta. And I said the sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta by the double angle form, the cosine theta. And I said I'll cancel the cosine, and I scratched out the sine instead of the cosine. So then I was putting cosine over cosine and getting one half and getting all kinds of messed up. But the cosines cancel, and I get cosine theta that can be over the, put over 2 sine theta minus sine theta over 2 sine theta. And those cancel and leave me 1 half. And this is 1 half times the cotangent theta. Now, some people did it differently. Let's see what they do. Oh, they, they left it cosine squared over 2 cosine uh, sine theta cosine theta minus, and then they said it was sine theta cosine theta over 2 sine theta cosine theta. Whoop, off the screen there. Move that up. Then they canceled one of the cosines here and said this is 1 half cotangent theta and minus, and these all canceled, and minus 1 half. So that's another way to do it. And there are other ways to do it. Let's see, did somebody do something else? Nope, I don't remember anything else yet. Okay. Next page. All right. This one half falls right out if you just do the sine of alpha plus beta. If you know that formula, it's sine of alpha cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, beta, oh, cosine, beta, plus, and stays the same on the, on the sine function, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second, And that's all over, all over this, so I can put each part over it. Cosine alpha, sine beta, and cosine alpha, sine beta. Sine over cosine of alpha is tangent alpha. Cosine beta over sine beta is cotangent beta plus these are the same, and these are the same, so that reduces to 1. That's 8. Number 9, I saw some clever ways of doing this one. Some people said um, sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, looks like the sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x, and so... If I divide this by 2, both sides, then the sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, goes to twice the angle. So they said this becomes 1 half sine of twice this angle. And had the answer. That's the short, easy way, but what I expected was most of you would use the... Um, square root function for the sine of theta over 2, so that's the square root plus or minus 1 minus the cosine of theta over 2 times plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine theta over 2. So the answer is going to be plus or minus because we don't know which one's happening on each of these. Uh, the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta over 2 times 2 is 4, 2 squared, 
So if I take the square root, I get plus or minus. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I'll change 1 minus cosine squared. I can't take the square root of these separately because of the minus. So I have to change it to sine squared theta over 2 squared, or 4. And now the square root of this is going to be plus or minus sine theta over 2. So, and there's not, not a real good way to get rid of the plus or minus on this to find out that that turns out to be plus. Okay, number 10. This is where I messed up. Uh, and, and let's look at this here. First, on number 10a, it says find the cosine of theta. Well, the sine is negative 4 fifths. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. So negative 4 fifths squared is 16 20 fifths plus cosine squared theta is 1. Subtract the 16 20 fifths from both sides and I get cosine squared theta equals 25 20 fifths minus 16 20 fifths is 9 20 fifths. I take the square root of both sides and I get the cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of 9 20 fifths, which is plus or minus 3 fifths. Then I look at where I got to take theta out of, and it's between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, and the cosine over here is always positive, so the answer is 3 fifths positive. Now I said find the sine of beta, but I said also in the same quadrants, that was a copy and paste error, I should have changed these and I forgot to, so the cosine in these two quadrants is never negative, so I said change that to positive. Okay, so now if we do this, we do the sine squared plus cosine squared beta equals 1. And 5 thirteenths squared is 25 1 ninths. And we get sine squared beta plus that equals 1. So you got to subtract 25 over 169 from both sides. So this 1 is 169 over 169. Subtract 25, and I get 144 over 169 is what sine squared beta has to be. So I take the square root, and the sine of beta has to be plus or minus 12 over 13. And in these two quadrants, it can be either one. So... When I did that, I really forced you to have to say, okay, it could be either one. So it should have been plus or minus. All right, the tangent of 2 theta. Now, you could go to the sine of 2 theta over the cosine of 2 theta and use those formulas, or you could use the tangent of 2 theta formula. I'm going to use the tangent of 2 theta formula, which you should have on your note card as 2 tangent of theta over uh, 1 minus tangent squared theta. Now, the tangent of theta would be the sine of theta. Sine of theta was negative 4 fifths over the cosine of theta, which is 3 fifths over 1 minus the tangent of theta, negative 4 fifths, over 3 fifths squared. Well, the fifths cancel here, so this is 2 times negative 4 thirds, which is negative 8 thirds, over, this is negative 4, the fives cancel, so this is negative 4 thirds squared, which is 16 ninths positive, and we've got to take 1 minus this. So this would be 9 ninths minus 16 ninths. 
9 minus 16 is negative 7 ninths and negative 8 thirds. So I multiply by the reciprocal uh, 9 sevenths negative, 9 sevenths negative. And those all become positive. This all cancels, becomes 1, and I get 72. Well, 3 goes into 9 um, 3 times, so I get 24 over 7. Okay, we're ready for the back page. Sine of theta over 2. Okay, so theta is, uh, the, the sine of theta over 2 is the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta over 2, plus or minus. Now, theta was in the first or fourth quadrant, and since in the sign of it is negative, it was down in the fourth quadrant. So if we're in the fourth quadrant, then half of the angle, half of that would still be in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. So the, it has to be negative. And the cosine we worked out to be three-fifths on the previous problem. So we've got negative square root of 1 minus the cosine, 3 fifths, a positive number, over 2. And that square root goes clear over the 2. So 1, which is 5 fifths minus 3 fifths, is 2 fifths cut in half. And half of 2 fifths is 1 fifth. So we get minus the square root of 1 over 5. And you should know the square root of 1 is 1. And some of you multiply by the square root of 5, top and knob, the numerator and denominator, you got minus the square root of 5 over 5. Some of you left it 2 over 10. You did 1 half here and 1 half here, made it 2 over 10. I expect you can reduce 2 over 10 to 1 over 5. Anyway, that's that one. I'm trying to think if I saw some other clever ways of doing this one. I don't remember any. Okay. Secant of theta minus beta. So secant is 1 over the cosine. Okay, so the cosine formula would be 1 over the co cosine formula is cosine of the first cosine of the second, and if this is minus, it's plus sine of the first, sine of the second. Now, you can't just write, uh, do the cosine, uh, and just take the reciprocal each part of this denominator. You have to get this whole denominator figured out and then take the reciprocal. So it stays the reciprocal of the cosine of theta was 3 fifths. Cosine of beta, it didn't matter. Cosine of beta, I changed it to 5 thirteenths, not negative 5 thirteenths. And then it's pl plus the sine of theta, which is negative 4 fifths, and the sine of beta is either a plus or a minus 12 thirteenths. So we're going to get two answers out of this. So we're going to get 1 over 15 60 fifths, and if I do the plus one, it's going to be minus 48 over 65, which is 1 over 15 minus 48 is minus 33 over 65. And if I invert and multiply, I get 
minus 65 over 33. If I do the other one, it's going to be, I'm going to have run out of room here. I'm going to write it right here. 1 over 15 over 65 plus 48 over 65, which is 1 over uh, 63 over 65, which is um, 65 60 thirds. Okay. Find all the solutions where the sine of x equals 0.6 or uh, three, three fifths. So if you pull out your calculator and go, and if your mode's in radians, which we do most of the time in a class, so I can quit and do the sine inverse of both sides and so be 0.6. One second. And I get 0.6435. And that's in the sign picks it out of this quadrant where it's positive. That's one of them. Plus multiples of 2 pi. And the other one, the other one for sign is 180 minus that, that's where it's also 0.6. And so I have to do, or x can be pi minus that answer, which is uh, 2.498 plus multiples of 2 pi, where M is an element of the integers. Now you could also change your mode to the radian uh, degrees, and then it would be the angle. I think it came out to be uh, 36.87 degrees plus multiples of 360, or X equals. 143.13 degrees plus multiples of 360, where m is an element of the integers, and we do x such that. Okay, when is the cotangent equal to 5? Well, that means the reciprocal of this, the tangent of x, has to be 1 fifth. And then if you do tangent inverse of both sides, it goes tangent inverse of 1 divided by 5, and we get uh, 0 0.1974. And tangent, you do, um, it's positive. In the first and fourth, they're crossed each other by pi, so you go plus uh, multiples of pi, and that takes care of all the answers. You don't do my, pi minus this or any of that kind of stuff, where m, m is an element of the integers. Okay, and the final two. I saw a couple of different ways people did this one. There are some clever ones here. Uh, the, the one I taught in class was if you got cosine of 2x, you just think of this as theta, and the cosine of theta being 1 half, that happens uh, right there and right there. No, right there and right there. It's pi over 6, yes, pi over 6, no, 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 no. Cosine is one half. Cosine is one half. That was here. Cosine is one half, not sine. Cosine is one half. That's pi over three plus multiples of two pi. And the other place is down here. So that, and we're supposed to do this in radians. So that'd be um, minus pi over three. 
And so that's 2x equals that. And so then I divide by 2 and I get x equals plus or minus pi over 6 plus multiples of pi. And so pi over 6 is, if I do the plus 1, I get pi over 6. And then 6, 6 more would be 7 pi over 6. If I do the minus pi over 6, that's not between 0 and 2 pi. But if I add 6, 6 to minus 1, 6, I get 5 pi over 6. And if I add uh, 6, 6 to that, I get 11 pi, uh, 11 pi over 6. Another person did said this was 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals 1 half. This is an identity for cosine of 2x. They then added the 1 to both sides and got uh, 3 halves divided by 2 and got 3 fourths. So they had sine squared x equals 3 fourths, and then they took the square root and said sine of x had to be square root of 3 over 2 plus or minus. And if you think, figure that out, it'll be the same answers. This one, I expected you to factor this, not try to change the sign because they're all in signs already. So this is like 2x squared minus x when you bring this over and minus 1 equals 0. So this is 2x plus 1, I believe, and x minus 1. So that makes minus 2x and plus 1x makes the minus x and everything else works. And so you get, and this is really the sine of x. So we get 2 sine x setting it equal to 0 equals minus 1 divide by 2 and sine of x equals minus one half, and this would be sine of x equals one. Sine of x is equal to one here, pi over two, and sine of x equal to minus one half is down here and there, and we're supposed to be do zero to two pi, so that's seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. And that is the test.